Hey everybody, welcome to video two for the night. And uh, I got a request to uh, test out the new version of Semantic Endpoint Protection. And I haven't tested it in a long time. So I went and grabbed the newest version, which is 12.0.122.192. It's the small business edition. And it comes with, um, you know, the standard stuff that uh, SCP comes with. And so it comes with network, which is a firewall, basically. It comes with uh, so-called proactive threat detection. Um, it uh, comes with the antivirus, so you can, you know, whatever settings that you can mess around with if you want. Um, but I just leave it the way it, it comes installed. It is fully updated. I updated about three times and rebooted a couple times to make sure that everything was up to date as good as it can be and um, the test files the links that I'm going to use is the same ones that I used in the McAfee 2011 review there you go so let's open up Internet Explorer here let's take a look at uh, RAM usage now the reason I look at semantic endpoint protection for businesses is because a lot of businesses actually use this um, not just businesses but a lot of universities use it too so memory usage not bad at all what do we got here four about 12 megs 13 megs definitely not bad at all so let's see what it can do here Now we know that the um, consumer version, the internet security, is pretty stout. It does have some weaknesses here and there, but overall it does pretty good. So let's see how the business version of this does. And it looks like it let that rogue right through, no problems at all. You can see it, it is right there. So let's move on. I'm going to have to kill this a couple times. Now I don't know if this comes with sonar or not. I really don't think it does and I don't understand why Semantic really never um, put some of this stuff in there. Okay now this one says Security, essentials, fraud, pending analysis. So right now it's in progress. So it's I think it's lo looking up online. I really didn't understand here what it's doing, but I think it's checking it online. So we'll let that sit in the background and see what it does. It didn't give me an option to remove it. So we'll see what happens. Okay, it looks like I found that one. Heuristics. And it looks like I got that one too. Now we got, got that one with a uh, signature. Now when I was in uh, college, uh, we we had some, you know, we didn't have anything, a lot of this stuff that we do today, that uh, people today have. And there's that one's back again. But I did notice a lot of the people that I fix their computers are from universities, and it looks like I got that one, that original one. And a lot of the security that they have is just not up to par where it should be. And a, uh, a lot of the universities charge um, a fairly high fee to fix computers. And in reality, if they had proper security, they wouldn't waste all the time to fix computers that they let become infected.
they would have the proper security on their um, students computers you wouldn't have to worry about a lot of this stuff now that you know they buy contracts from these major companies okay it looks like it got that one So that one's done. And some of the people that I know, like I was saying, they, um, I, I mean, it's really weird because they won't let you use your own security that you want to use, but at the same time, they make you use an inferior suite because they say, well, we're securing the network. Well, in reality, they're not securing anything we know they're not because they have people in there all the time okay this one's quarantined it's gonna have to be restart I'll uh... I'll wait to restart and they constantly have people in there with with problems on their computers and it's just the most annoying thing I've ever seen in my life okay this thing's getting real annoying now so I'm gonna reboot see if I can get rid of that Oh, no, I got it. And all they do day in and day out is they don't even fix computers at some of the places that I've been to. All they do is reformat. Oh, yeah, and they call it fixed. So their their fix is to reformat. Okay, I'm gonna restart this. Um, see if I can get if we can get rid of that annoying rogue, and um, I'll be back when it's done restarting. Okay, so I restarted here, and it doesn't look like it got rid of that f file. You can see that uh, that rogue is still popping up. Why did this open up? I might, I might have accidentally clicked on the wrong thing. So this is this is really annoying, but we'll keep going on here. So I think this is where we left off. Okay, that one didn't work last time either. I don't think this one worked either. So it looks like it blocked that. Traffic from IP is blocked. HTTP LNOR executable download detected. Okay, so I'll block that one. I'm going to close this uh, and open it up again. Whenever you open up an executable, I think it opens up that rogue. See, that's that's what I'm saying. It looks like every time you click on anything that's an executable, it automatically pop up pops up that rogue. That can get really old and annoying very fast. Looks like that first one didn't work. Okay, I don't know what, what just came up in the background here. Alright, last one here. I'm getting real tired of that rogue. Driving me up the walls. And last one didn't work. Okay, so I'm going to open up Semantic here. And I'm going to do a full scan. 
and I will pause the video and I'll be back when the full scan here is done. So I'll see you then. Okay, so I finished scanning here, scanned 109,000 files, and it found a tracking cookie. That's it, and it deleted it. So these are some of the things in quarantine that it found automatically. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reboot, and then I'm going to run CCleaner, and then after that I'm going to run Malwarebytes. So I'll be back with a result from Malwarebytes. Okay, so Malwarebytes finished scanning here. I was kind of looking at some videos stuck on YouTube. So let's see what I found here. Now, if we, were, if you look at the other video from McAfee, you'll look and you see that, I remember that it found, I think it was five things, Malwarebytes. But, um, I don't, so we have this Trojan fake alert, Malware trace, hijack, multiple AV. These are the exact same files and registry key changes that McAfee let through. Now we have a memory process here, so we have this file loaded in memory somewhere, and because there's a memory process there, I'm going to restart. So after this is done restarting, I'm going to come back and do a scan with Hitman Pro, and I'll show you the results when that's done. So I'll see you soon. Okay, so Malwarebytes finished scanning, or uh, uh, Hitman Pro finished scanning. And it didn't find anything, so that's good to see. Let's run Gmer here, see if it uh, if any weird things pop up, like any type of root keys or anything like that. Okay, no uh, weird drivers here, just uh, regular ones from Symantec. So, because I have some time now, I'm going to do a scan with uh, Super Anti Spyware and we'll see if it finds anything out of the ordinary. So I'll be back when it's done scanning. Okay, so Super Anti Spyware finished scanning here and it found the same problems that it found in um, the McAfee test that malware trace registry key and the broken file association. So, as you can see, that the semantic endpoint protection didn't do any better than the McAfee did. And that's really kind of disappointing because so many companies rely on semantic here to protect their um, corporate computers. And I really think what it should be like is security on a business side should be a lot stronger than the security on the consumer side but it seems to me like right now it's completely backwards it's the weirdest thing any endpoint security solution that I tried for businesses seems to be a lot weaker than the counterpart that they offer for consumers and that seems kinda weird to me because you could have a company that's worth millions and millions of dollars protecting themselves with software that isn't going to work. And, you know, they say we have all these servers and all this, you know, security and stuff. But in the end, the best way, in my opinion, to secure your uh, your users is a combination of software and hardware, you know, hardware firewalls and all that type of stuff. But in the end, if your software stinks, I don't care what you do with the hardware, infections are still going to end up getting through and you're going to have a compromised network. So, they, you know, all these companies should start really thinking about beefing up their security a lot better on corporate networks because lots of money is being stolen from from corporate businesses and small businesses and things like that. So that's it for this review. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. A little bit different here. And um, I'm going to think about what I want to do f for my next ones. But we'll see when that uh, gets through, what happens there, and what I decide on doing. So I'm going to edit these and post them online. So everybody take care, have a good night, and I'll talk to everybody later.